interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you a breaking news story on the mysterious movements of shadows across the earth. Reports have been flooding in from all corners of the globe, from every continent and every time zone, about the strange behavior of shadows. People have reported that shadows are no longer predictable and are instead moving in unusual and unpredictable directions. This phenomenon has left scientists and experts scratching their heads, with many theories and hypotheses being proposed but no concrete answers as of yet. Some have suggested that it could be due to changes in the Earth's magnetic field or the position of the Sun, while others have pointed to possible shifts in the planet's gravitational pull. Whatever the cause, this development has sparked concern around the world observing the unusual and unpredictable directions of shadows with a sense of awe and wonder. Stay tuned for further updates on this developing story as we seek to unravel the mystery behind the movement of shadows across our planet. Let's go to our correspondent in Colorado. Hi, welcome back to the Backpacker Coach. Today I have another special episode of Chris Kramer's and Lisanne Froon, The Girls Missing from Panama. So today I want to go over what shadows can realistically do. And what I mean by that is we're going to look at only three pictures today and compare what happens when you are further away from a person and then what happens when you get closer to a person and look at the shadow and see what realistically happens to the shadow. And then also we're going to look at the third picture and see what happens just 17 minutes later and see what realistically where a shadow would be. So let's get into this. I think you're going to be very amazed by what you actually will get to see in this video. So let's get into this. So I wanted to show you the three pictures that we're going to be looking at and the shadows. So there's this picture first that we're going to be looking at and we're going to be looking at the shadow and figure out realistically what does that look like. We're going to be looking at this photo and realistically what these shadows should be doing, and also realistically what uh, Lisanne's uh, shadow should be doing. And then we're going to be looking at this photo and the shadow and what that shadow should be doing. And if you're wondering why this looks a little funny, it's because I put the uh, better picture um, over this, the other, the rest of the picture, which was a lower resolution picture. So I wanted to show you this map and show you the part that we're going to be looking closer at. It's going to be this part right here. We're going to jump to this part of the map and I'm going to show you some interesting things about the shadows. So here's the part of the map that I was referencing earlier. And so we're going to zoom up into this area here and take a look at these two pictures first. All right. So I want you to look at this first picture here of Lisanne, and we have to figure out where it was taken and which direction it was taken, and also how far away the person was that was taking the picture. So, so I've decided that this photo here, we know that there's this river that runs along this part of the trail, and you can always see it run through both of these pictures. So we know that it was this, these photos were taken by this little river. So this photograph here, this red dot represents the person who is taking the picture. And this little turquoise dot is a representation of who was in the picture, which was Lisanne. So this first picture, this person was standing roughly about here and Lisanne was standing here just in front of the little river. And now we have to figure out which direction they were looking or taking the picture, which is also a vertical picture. So they were looking this direction. Okay. And so they get a little bit of the road and then they get all of the, all of this area here. Okay. And if you notice, if you look at this shadow, this shadow is going in this direction, which also matches the other shadows that are going in the same direction. Now you have 
Now let's look at this picture here, the one of Lisanne that's a little closer. And we need to figure out which direction and where everybody was standing. So if you look at where Lisanne is standing, she's standing a little bit closer to this river, so she's a little closer now. And Chris is also standing closer to Lisanne. But here's the important part. They're not just standing and looking and taking a picture at the same direction. Chris decided to turn and take a picture up going this direction, this way. As well as if you look at the shadows, these shadows, the shadows are going this direction. And of course, we don't get to see the shadow of the sand here. So if we put this all together for the moment, We have two very different directions of the sun. So what we need to do is we are going to figure out first what the shadow does when you're far away. And then we will figure out what the shadow does when you're close. And then after that, we will figure out what the shadow does when it's on a hill. So that's our first part of what we need to do. On this first part, let's figure out what happens when you are roughly 30 feet away from the shadow. All right, let me set up what we had to do here. So first we had to be 30 feet away from the person, and then we had to make sure that the shadow was perpendicular to the bottom of the, of the picture. And so that's what we had to do first. So you can see here, our little scarecrow there is 30 feet away and our shadow is perpendicular. Okay, so we have this angle is our first important angle. All right, let me show you what I had to do next. To get to this photo, what I had to do is I needed to match this line with this line here of the shadow that come from the posts. That way we would be able to get also a better idea of what Lasanne's shadow would actually look like as well as that would make it so we actually know the true angle of the sun and where it's coming from. So what I had to do is when I walked up to the scarecrow, I had to take multiple pictures moving along and around the scarecrow until I would get one that actually matched this shadow. And that would be being able to come as close as we possibly can to matching the other picture, which then we would have now a better representation. So then we would actually have we'd know that Lisanne's shadow, which direction it actually was going, and we'd know a better direction of the, the true angle of what, where the sun is coming from. Because this uh, little guy over here, that's the angle of the shadow. So it would be a little different. So now we have this first line here, which is the perpendicular line, which I had showed you before, which was from our first picture. And now we have the other line, which is our other angle, which actually shows the direction of the sun. And we also have the angle of the fence post in there as well. And this line in the back, there's three reasons why this line is actually going to be different. One, it's because it is behind this, the main object, so it's going to move. Um, the second reason is because it's on the hill, that 29 degree slope. That's why you see that cardboard there, because I have it on the 29 degree slope. And the third reason why the shadow is going to be different is because this post is to the right of the main object. So I just wanted to see, guys, what the uh, angle of this is. 
So I'm going to set my phone on here. I have a little uh, angle meter. So it's 29 degrees. All right, I really, I wanted to realistically see how much the shadow will move when it's on an angle. So we're going to try this at this angle first. So we're going to start at nice flat and I'm going to mark on this edge right here, right there. That's where we're starting. And then we're going to go down and we're going to move it. We're going to mark it there. So it only moved, what, maybe a an inch and a half, maybe two inches. So it does move. You can see that. But not very far. Now let's try moving it over here. See if that makes a difference in how far it moves. So we're going to mark it here. Okay, now we're going to go down. And mark it, same spot across. There. So I moved a little more. Nice. Move it about three inches or so. And of course, it also gets longer, of course. But we're not really going to deal with the length, we're just dealing with the movement of the shadow, of how far it moves. So I just want to show you guys this picture. So by my calculations, um, we at least know now what the true angle of what Lissan's shadow should look like if we uh, actually could see all of the whole picture. Um, kind of finished off her legs a little bit, gave her some boots. I know they're a little bit tall, but anyway, now we at least have a general idea of the true direction of the sun. Um, obviously the shadow is probably a little long, but still the, the point is, is the, the direction. That's the main takeaway from this picture. So now let's go back to the map and let's put it all together. So it turns out at least the shadows on the ground Realistically, this is possible. So we've at least proved, at least we know now that the shadows, it's possible to go between this photo and this photo. And the shadows definitely realistically can be going in these two different directions. So after they finished taking these photos, just 17 minutes later, they continued walking up this path, this road, and they stopped somewhere along in here just 17 minutes later. And you can see the uh, turquoise dot is Lisan, and the red dot is Chris. And they took a picture going this direction. But what's interesting about this photo is if you look at this photo, look at the direction of which, which way the shadow is going. It's going this way. All right. This is just 17 minutes later. Now let's look back. Now that this is our new direction, we know now which direction, the, which way the sun was going. For sure. It's this direction. Now how is it that the sun can be going in a completely opposite direction? That is a problem. 
So I wanted to show you guys a short time-lapse video of what a shadow would realistically do in just 17 minutes. It's even quite possible that the shadow might even move less just because the shadow will actually be a little shorter because of the time of year and the placement on the earth. So I just wanted to let you know, guys know that. But I still wanted to just show you guys what realistically a shadow would do and how it would move in just 17 minutes around, you know, 11 o'clock. Okay, now you can see that the shadow only moved 8 inches in 17 minutes. So that is how a shadow realistically would move in 17 minutes. So what are our different options or possibilities with dealing with this issue? Well, I suppose there's a few of them, so let's go over some of them. So I guess the first possibility is that Lisanne and Chris could have walked through a portal, walked into a inter another dimension where it was a completely different time. That's highly unlikely. What else would be another possibility? So another possibility is that this image that you see here was taken at a completely different time of day. That's a possibility. But if that's true, if this was taken at a completely different time of day, then that would mean that the other photos would possibly not be real or possibly could be from a different time. It depends on how you want to look at it. Or you could look at it that all the photos are not real. I mean, of all the photos that I've seen, this one looks to be the most realistic. It looks very real. You can't really pick out any issues with this photo. So if we're going to say that this one is the real photo, how can we trust any of the photos because if you can prove that one of them is completely off that means all of them are off then the next problem is that if any of these photos are completely moved around in time or are not correct not real that means you can't trust any of them i'd love to get your opinion on what you think